going to show you how to make this cute striped slouchy hat. It has some rib stitch at the beginning and then uh, an interesting pattern. A very simple decrease at the top. Let's get started. Let's talk about the supplies you're going to need. I am going to knit my hat on a 16 inch circular needle. It's a very common size needle that works for most hats. And there are actually three different ways you can do this though. One option is the 16 inch circular needle. Another option is to use double pointed needles. They probably need to be at least eight inches in size so that they can handle the project without falling off the ends. The other choice is magic loop. There's the magic loop method where you use one very long circular needle and pull the extra cable out at one, one or two points. There's the other option that I showed you on the Cushion of Joy site. There's a video where it uses two different circular needles and it demonstrates how to do that. But you'll need two different cables and then the tips will need to be the same size. You don't need those yet, but let's talk about the sizes of needles you need. For the rib stitch at the beginning, you'll need a smaller needle size. And then when you get to the main pattern of your hat, you'll switch to the bigger needle size. And then as the hat gets smaller, you'll need to use a different size circle. You won't be able to use this 16 inch circle anymore. At that point, you'll either need to switch to the cable needles, two cable needles like this to do magic loop, or the one great big long magic loop, or the double pointed needles like this. Then you will need more on sizes in a moment, but first you also need two different colors of yarn if you want to do the stripes. This is Aran White yarn, and you'll need one stitch marker. The sizes of needles that you'll need will depend on your gauge, and there's another whole video on making sure that your hat is going to fit. You certainly can just knit it in the needle sizes suggested by the pattern and hope that it works out, but sometimes that's a little heartbreaking. A lot of knitters get all the way finished with the project and then are disappointed when it doesn't fit. At that point, you either need to rip it all out and start over or just kind of throw out that hat, find somebody else who will fit that hat and make another one for yourself. A gauge swatch can help prevent that and there's another whole video on swatching. So after you have done that and checked your gauge, then that will determine which size needles you need, both for the rib stitch at the beginning and then the main body of your project. The next thing to talk about then is casting on. This is the circular tubular cast on for one by one rib. It is particularly beautiful and stretchy, very stretchy for a hat like this or other projects as well, but it's very beautiful. And this is the brim of the hat. So this is where it goes right above your forehead and you do want it to be particularly a beautiful stitch right here. You can see how this one just almost disappears. It just like rolls into itself. It's very lovely. And then it sets up this one by one rib section. It is a little complicated. So there's another whole video that gives you all of these step steps. I'm not going to go over it again here, but it gives you all of the steps one by one. And if you can stick to it, it is just a really beautiful result. But don't get frustrated if it's too much. Another option as well is just the regular long tail cast on. You then do a section of one by one rib, which is very as straightforward as it says. I just did a knit stitch, which I can tell because I'm getting V's underneath. The next one, I have a little horizontal line, which means that one's pearl. So pearl one, knit one, pearl one. All the way across for all of those rows. And each time you get to the stitch marker, you'll just slip the stitch marker. There are also videos on working with the circular needles if you're going to work in the round. The last thing we want to talk about before we go on is just how to count your rows. You want to have 12 and ideally you've been using a row counter so you know exactly how many you have but just in case you get off I thought it would be good to review that here. So each little V is one row. So we start here at the bottom we're going to count this first one will count as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, and then the one on the needle would count as 12. And for this section, we need 12 rows. So I am finished and ready to go on from here. I'm going to do my last purl and slip my stitch marker over. At this point, I'm ready both for my next color of yarn and for my bigger needle. So I, I'm going to get my bigger needle ready and I'm also getting my yarn. Here's my color of yarn. So to switch to the needle size, I simply pick up the new needle and start knitting with that one. I'm going to put that in. I'm done with that yarn for a minute. I take the end of my second color of yarn and just fold it in half. Leave yourself a good sized tail so it doesn't come out. And you just put it right over the right hand needle. And pull it through. That's all there was to attaching your new color of yarn. The first row then is to knit. So I'm just going to knit all the way across with my new needle. I would note here, it's very possible I'm going to lose this stitch marker. So I'm actually just going to put it down for this row. And when I get to the end of this row, I will stop and pick it back up. As we're nearing the end of this first row, there are several things we need to stop and talk about. Two stitches left. All right. First, I am done with this smaller needle size. I'm going to move it out of the way. The next thing is that we're ready to cut off the end of this first yarn that we were using and leave, you know, a good amount, 8 to 10 inches or so. And we will work with that later. And you can just let it drop and hang down, it's fine. And then you'll need to snug up, usually, the yarn for the second color that you've added. The next thing is to check and make sure that first stitch is not twisted. You can see mine actually is twisted. That's the one that I just folded in half and put on the needle. So you want to make sure the stitch sits like this with your the part of the stitch in front of the needle needs to come off to the right and behind goes off to the left. You can see on this stitch right here, it's the other it's the other way. So I'm just going to take that off and flip it over, put it back on so that it's going the correct direction. Okay. Now we need to remember to put the stitch marker back on. And then the last thing to know is that you ideally want to do what's called a jogless join with the new color. So it just makes it a little tidier which means instead of knitting the first stitch, we're just going to slip it. So you're just going to insert the needle into the first stitch and just pull it over. And that will count as your first knit stitch, but really that'll just help keep that first row a little more even where the color change happens. On this row now, you're doing knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. But that first slip counted as our knit stitch. So now we are going to purl. We do this all the way around and really that's everything to, there is to know if you just follow the pattern that's everything there's to know until it's time to start doing decrease rows. I want to stop here and also make sure you know how to count the pattern rows. So in this pattern it's a row of knit and then a row of knit one purl one. And so for each of those pairs it's really easy to define to find these distinctive purl bumps that are in the middle. So it's where you have the little horizontal stripe. And basically when you have five of those, that means you've done these 10 rows, right? Because it's a row of just knit and then it's a row of knit, purl, knit, purl. So this is one right here. And that is my second row. It's my first, I've completed my first pair of rows right at this one. So there's one here, two, three, four, and the fifth is sitting just under my needle. I just finished that row. So that's how I know that I'm done with that section, that stripe, and it's time to change the yarn again and go on to the next stripe. I've now finished my six stripes. I've got eight rows done of my last stripe. 
This is where you want to try on your hat and make sure it fits like you want. This is the, the last easy point of no return. And if you wanted to add another stripe, you could go ahead and finish out this one, do eight rows of the next stripe before you want to start your decrease row. I have tried my hat on though, and I'm ready for my decrease row. In this row, you're going to knit two together. And I'm going to show you that in a moment, but for right now, I'm just going to do one to hold my stitch marker on. And then I'm going to have trouble with this single circular needle to do the decrease row. So I need to switch either to one of the magic loop techniques or to double pointed needles at this point. I'm going to switch and do the first half of these stitches on a second set of, of circular needles. But you can use, there's a video on knitting in the round. It shows you all four methods that are available. You'll just need to pick a different method for this part of the hat. So in this whole row, we are going to knit two together. This I'm going to pull out of my way. And to knit two together, it's very simple. You just take your right needle, insert it into the first two stitches on the left at the same time, wrap your yarn around, oops, wrap your yarn around like usual, and pull it through both stitches. I'll show you again. So you insert your right needle into two stitches on the left hand needle, yarn over like usual and pull it through. So you do that all the way across. I finished my decrease row and I've knit all the way around one more time. Now I need to get a length of yarn that will go around the whole circle and cut off the end. Thread that through a yarn needle. And now we just pick off the stitches one by one off the knitting needle and onto the yarn darning needle. So this was my working yarn right here. I've just put my working yarn onto this needle and you just pull them off. You just slip them onto the yarn needle all the way around. I have thread it all the way through and now I just pull it tight to cinch it all up just like that and then I will tie it off weave in all the ends and my hat will be done one other note here is that you could decide to put on a pom-pom to attach uh, that is an an optional choice it's ready to go just like this or there's another video on how to add a pom-pom if you'd like hope you love your new hat